We're at the mix in LA during E3, and we're catching up with Ring Fox Studios uh, to talk about Severed. Uh, now, normally when we do interviews, we do interviews on games that we've yet to review, games that are yet to come out. But in this case, I'm actually privileged enough to have played through the game. We can talk about everything without spoiling anything, of course. But you're also bringing new versions of the game. It was a PS Vita exclusive for a while there. Um, what, what went into sort of choosing the platforms that, that you're expanding to now? Uh, so yeah, once we shipped the Vita version of the game, we just started thinking about like what other platforms could this game work on, and uh, and so there was a, a number of platforms that have uh, touch inputs, primarily touch inputs. So uh, we announced on Monday that we're bringing it to iOS devices and to 3DS and Wii U. Yes, because a touch is of course instrumental in the game. It's it's what it's all about, really. And I think uh, very few games that I've played have have done such a good job of implementing touch into the mechanics without making it feel, uh, without you know, dumbing it down or making it something else than it is. It's it, you really did a tremendous job with that. Oh yeah, thank you. We tried really hard to try to make a game that doesn't feel like a simple casual game that really tries to push uh, like what touch games are doing and. Uh, uh, I'm happy to say that like most people who have played the game, uh, from what they're saying about the game, it seems like we did succeed, so that, that makes me really happy. Yeah. I think the nice part of it was that even though of course it's a benefit of swiping fast, there's a benefit of that, it was very tactical. And I, I felt that the combat was, there was, you really had to figure out what, what order to do things and how to sort of find a strategy for each sort of encounter with the different enemies and so on and so forth. There felt like puzzle battles, if you will. Yeah, yeah, uh, especially like as you start to get closer to the end of the game and you, we've introduced a number of new powers that the player has to use. Um, the strategy of how to approach a battle becomes very important. Some battles, there's some battles if you just try and brute force your way through it, you're not going to succeed. Uh, like some of the later battles in the game have, they're kind of timed, so you have like a certain amount of time to defeat all of the enemies. And uh, especially when you get to those parts of the game, uh, if you're not doing things, if you're not thinking about how you're approaching the battle, you just won't, you won't be able to succeed. So yeah, uh, definitely there's a big strategic element to Severed. I really enjoy the narrative as well. It's one of those narratives that doesn't really, it's not as outspoken as some, it sort of allows you to sort of interpret things yourself. But I felt it was very powerful, especially towards the end of the game, really, big meaning there. What, uh, without sort of telling too much about what, what's actually going on there, what, what can you say of the narrative? Uh, yeah, I think like what the way you described it is perfect. Uh, we do leave a lot of things vague in the story. Um, while there's like major story uh, elements that happen and the player is free to interpret them in different ways, um, even within our studio there's different interpretations of what the actual story is. Um, and uh, and we don't we don't explicitly answer every question and just kind of leave it up to the player's imagination in some cases. Um, and you know, there's all of the different interpretations. I think they are all interesting. So it's kind of cool to think about this, like where is Sasha and what is actually happening to Sasha. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. And there's this theme of sort of sacrifice, if you will, that that runs through it. That's very powerful. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, there's there's strong so strong themes of sacrifice and of death and loss and and dealing with death and loss and uh, acceptance and uh, um, I feel like uh, we really tried to explore those those feelings. It's very different from our previous games where we did ex we did ex uh, explore like themes of death in Guacamole as well, but this time around we did it in a much more serious uh, uh, tone and serious manner. So. Uh, it was a different, definitely a departure from our previous games where they were very humorous before. Now it's much more dark, dark themes. Um, um, yeah, but it was really interesting to, to try to do that. Yeah, and, and, and it's not just dealing with death, it's who, who is actually dead and what, what is this place? It's, it's sort of, it's something that's left up to interpret yourself. Yeah, exactly. Um, we didn't, we, did, we felt that the, part, the story is more interesting if if we don't like explain every detail, and uh, and I, I feel like the way where we settled on it, we're ex we explain enough for the for the player to be able to form a story in their own mind around the framework that we present. Uh, I think that we did a pretty good job of that. Yeah. One thing that you know I hate to bring up complaints, but one <laughs> thing that I was was thinking about with the game, and I think this is something where 
it's both good and bad. It's the way you treated uh, secrets and, and stuff like that. It's because you sort of have an idea of where they are, and most of it. Some of them are really, you have to figure them out yourself, uh, especially the memories are very sort of tricky to figure out and there's no hand holding whatsoever. But in terms of sort of collectibles and stuff, you sort of, you sort of uh, signposted them a little bit. Uh, what, what went into that decision? Uh, yeah, the signposting that you're describing is that's definitely true. And some of the some of those signposts uh, they kind of give you a reward right away. Uh, but we really did try to, whenever possible, to have some kind of challenge behind the signpost. So the signpost is just a, a it's a, a doorway to a challenge, and you still have to complete some challenge to actually get the reward at the end. So yeah. I, I think there was there was one lever. It was a question mark in a room and one lever that it took me forever to find it. Oh, yeah. It was because behind a vine or something at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Even though it was sort of signposted, I still had to sort of make the work myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's like we we wanted people who were trying to 100 percent the game. We wanted to give them clear indicators on the map. You should go here. You should go here um, rather than kind of making it too vague. And then people are like, well, I haven't 100 percent of this area, and I don't know where to go. And then they're looking online and this stuff. So maybe we erred on the, a little bit too, too far on the side of making it too easy to find the secrets. But we felt that was a better experience than you know, people comparing screenshots of their map to the map online and that kind of thing. And that would be a whole different kind of problem, I feel like. So Interesting. And uh, you've got new versions of the game coming out. Is, is the content the same? Because to me, it felt like the game was complete. When I, when I finished it, it felt like a complete game. Or are you adding anything in terms of content? Uh, the, I guess the biggest thing that we're adding in terms of content is we're adding a, an easier difficulty mode for some of the other platforms. Uh, just to make the game more accessible to maybe a younger or less hardcore audience. Uh, because the, you know, the, the game as it was released on Vita, while that version is still, you can still play that version on the other platforms. Um, there are some parts of that that are quite difficult, uh, especially if you're trying to 100% the game. So, so uh, yeah, we, we have an easier difficulty mode, which is kind of just toning down the battles, making, giving more breathing room to the player. Maybe not falling through clouds and stuff like that. Yeah, the, the cloud timer is maybe two, two and a half times slower, that kind of thing. Uh, enemies attack less frequently. Um, that's the biggest change. For the most part, the game is, is pretty much the same across all of the platforms. Um, but there are some other platform-specific things that we're adding, like uh, for the Nintendo platforms, because Nintendo doesn't have uh, achievements in their UI. We've added achievements into the game for that. Uh, and we have cross-buy for the 3DS, Wii U versions of the game. So, and not, not too many games are supporting that, but we're really trying to do that as well. Um, and uh, adding a little bit of uh, graphical enhancements for the HD version of the game. So on iPad and on Wii U, there's some, like we've added more effects and more lights and stuff like that, uh, just to try and boost the visuals a little bit more for HD screens. Yeah. I think one of the, the big things about uh, the visuals of it is that it's very, easily readable which I think is great when you have your hand across the screen all the time yeah. it's kind of it's kind of an important thing to have that yeah definitely um, yeah playing with the stylus on uh, on the Nintendo platforms is nice too because you can kind of pull your hand away from the screen um, and then on the on the iOS we're also supporting some iOS features like replay kits uh, which is a it's a system that allows you to capture gameplay and upload it to YouTube very simply uh, and we're supporting metal for the higher end devices so that we can again do like more graphical enhancements to the game. So yeah, basically we're trying to support all the features of the platforms that we can uh, to try and make those releases as good as possible. Uh, what, did you give any thought to possibly porting it to, to non-touchscreen platforms? And what did you find? Uh, yeah, we're, we're often uh, getting suggestions from people to like about maybe using like PlayStation Move now that PlayStation VR is coming. There might be a you know a lot of it's gonna be a little bit taxing to yeah yeah the sword fighting with the move might be well you'll, maybe you'll get stronger from playing it uh, or even PlayStation VR um, uh, some people have suggested maybe trying to use the touchpad on the DualShock 4 yeah <laughs> so um, I think you know we might continue to experiment with these things we don't want to release the game in a way that it feels forced out on a platform we want we want to make sure that the experience is good on wherever we release it so. I'm not sure if it will ever come to those things, um, uh, but it's possible. It's possible. Well, at least the audience can grow larger with Wii U and iOS and and uh, 3DS, and and I think that's a good thing. Th thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah. Thank you very much.